now if we what's the link for this share yeah if you share that um are you on facebook oh are you on the okay let me see I guess I'll have to post uh, it in the chat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, I see that live now. Sweet. Yeah, but it's not the same link. All right. Okay, so I'll post it on that one. Thanks. Uh, all right. Um, uh, let me. Posted something? Yeah. Mm. So, uh, so. Uh, okay. hey there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have to make everyone come to this stream because the other one. Uh, yeah, was messed up, and we have to try this link. Uh, let me. Hi. Uh, okay, so we have ten. Let's just wait for one minute. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking with them to make sure everyone comes here. Um, can you post in the? Um, the new one? Yeah, in, in the description of the old link as well. Go to the new link. Yeah. Hey guys, all right. We are going to be starting in less than a minute. Uh, just we're trying to make sure everything is up. Not this one. So, um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, all right, um, nonsense. So, if I go here, I don't know. Yeah, it was, yeah, was it okay. Okay. Um let me just open the slides. Can I uh screenshot the uh, can I oh did you modify oh. this one as well? Yeah yeah yeah. So that's that's where all the slides are, yeah. Okay. But put it in the um the new one. Yeah, in the description as well. Hey everyone, okay. Um what prior knowledge? Um what we did in the uh, PyTorch challenge would be enough. So just um, based on that, we are going to develop more on uh, how it is being applied in self-driving cars. And uh, specifically, we are going to go more in depth with uh, CNNs and how they are being processed uh, while driving. But make sure to download the um, um, Dropbox files and we sh you'll be able to have all the um, slides and the uh, uh, project as well to do it on your own afterwards. All right. Um, right. So we have everyone. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, my name is Roland. I'm part of the PyTorch challenge. And uh, yeah, sorry for the delay. We had some problems with the old laptops. And we try this one now. Uh, I wanted to present you Ishan, which is a doctor in uh, self-driving cars. And um, he was kind enough to host this website, uh, webinar for us. And we're going to go more in depth on uh, his work on uh, self-driving cars and how he has been uh, using uh, CNNs on uh, his work. Um, Ishan, if you want to start. Sweet. Um, yeah, guys, uh, the Dropbox files, I think I just posted that in the comments um, in this link. So if you just go to the comments, I'm sure it's there. If not, just um, just yeah, um, add it in the comments, just in the chat, please. 
Um, once again, uh, thanks for coming here, guys. Uh, sorry for the delay. So basically, as a self-driving engineer, all our work is in Linux and Ubuntu. And, um, at the, and obviously, with all the pros, um, it's, it's hard to sometimes things mess up. Like, I tested, I tested this like live streaming software early in the day and somehow it just didn't work. So we'll, uh, we'll proceed with this. Um, ideally, I would have shared my screen with you so you could have seen kind of what I was doing. I would have pulled up some demos, but uh, let's just proceed like this. Um, if you download the Dropbox file, you'll see a presentation. So I'm actually following the same presentation. Uh, it gives you a reference. It's got some nice images. Um, and there's also some code. So I've got two demos for the session. You don't have to do it now. Um, you can do it at this own time. If you do it in the session, you can ask me any questions about them. Um, uh, basically, there's two driver files. Um, there's two demos, and, and then I'll come to the presentation. I'll just tell you what the demos are, so it gives you a bit of time. So the first demo is um, an actual network which we use in our own company. It's a depth network. So basically, it takes, it takes a camera input image, and it outputs a depth map. And to execute that file, all you need to do is run testdepth.py. In the, it'll be there in the Dropbox folder. Um, it should work for Windows as well um, because I, I made sure it should work regardless of the platform. If it gives an error or something, let me know. And basically what this does is it takes in a bunch of images from a folder called ins. It's in the Dropbox folder. So ins are your input image. And it saves them in the output directory called outs. Basically, that's what all it does. So if you run it, you, you, you should see some results. Um, and the second demo, by any chance, if someone has, doesn't have TensorFlow, it doesn't run, whatever, there is a demo for something called genetic algorithms. Uh, it's not CNNs, it's a different field of research, but um, if, you, if you want to run that one, uh, you go into the subfolder called GA test and run main.py. And it's all Python 3 files, by the way. So um, hope that makes sense. Um, Give me a second. Yeah. Just say, all right. I posted everything in the description. OK. Um, Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just uh, making sure. Do you have the live stream there as well? So we can make sure everything uh, works uh, with the link. Yeah. I mean, live stream. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go, go back there. And let's make sure it's still working. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Links OK. So we posted the links in the. Um, Description just had in there, and uh, we can uh, start properly. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, and um, again, if you don't have the demos, just download the presentation. Ideally, I would have shared this in my screen, but you know, things didn't work out. So, um, so firstly, just a little introduction. Um, I work as the main uh, software engineer, and um, it's a company I've been kind of associated with. With from the very start, the founder is in uni, uh, and he's a friend of mine. Um, and we're called Academy of Robotics. So if you type in Google, you can find a website. It's a very nice website. I'd recommend you uh, visiting that. And we are uh, one of the many uh, self-driving car start startups in Europe and the US. Different. Uh, what makes us different is two things. Uh, first, we focus on getting our self-driving cars onto the streets um, in the real world and operate like kind of commercially. Like we don't want to have something that'll be ready in five years or 10 years time. Uh, we're aiming to have our cars running in London from next year um, and running on actual like delivery runs. Um, the second thing that's unique about us is uh, we are a self-driving car startup that focus on kind of delivery, right? So we want to completely automate, not completely, I'd say, but you know, automate to a large extent um, the process of like parcel delivery. Um, so basically, it it sounds like you might say like, oh, but we've got Amazon for that, whatever. But really, the kind of very specific sub problem that we look at is something called last mile delivery, right? So um, if you kind of get a parcel from 
anywhere in the world, you know, let's say you've ordered like a new desktop or a mouse or something, right? And it ships to you from across the world in a cargo ship, you know, it comes up to you, even your city. The cost for that isn't actually much because it kind of comes in uh, freights and containers. It doesn't really cost much. The main cost of getting something delivered to you is um, really that last bit where an actual human has to, you know, take out a motorcycle or something and ride and, you know, come to you. And obviously you have costs related with that. So what we kind of want to do is have like a, in every major city, have or maybe different parts of... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, try to okay. Um, so uh, in kind of every major city, we want to have kind of all these uh, hubs where you know, your parcels can come to. And from there, our self-driving drones or cars or whatever can just, um, it's a bit like Uber, but for parcel deliveries and with kind of self-driving cars, that makes sense. Um, if you have the presentation, you can, you, um, we have a problem with the presentation because the link is not posted. Um, I have to post it again, but it's uh, a bit, um, Oh, okay. All right. Uh, can you export the link from here as well and uh, post it on the in the um... in the in the chat? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, live streams is always <laughs> yeah. opens the can of worms, but. Um, well, it's in the description. Uh, it's broken. Oh, okay. It has, all right, uh, I think I got it. Oh, I'll just, I can generate a link again, I guess. No, no, it's fine. It's I got fine. it, I, I got, got it. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just, I'll, I'll post it. Yeah. Okay, so the link's getting posted now. Sorry, guys, yeah. it's just live stream. It's <laughs> See, we're building self-driving cars here, but we have problems with the live stream, you know? <laughs> so it's just always, always like that, so. Um, Yeah, um, continuing from <laughs> where you are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, okay, so if you open, I, yeah, like I hope you have the presentation now. Um, and um, so there's, there's a picture of the car which, yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's so difficult. Can you go on uh, that link as well? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 that, okay. Uh, <laughs> Hold on a second, guys. Hold on a second, guys. Uh, Sorry. The, the the live stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that one, All yeah. Right. Okay, I'll just post it here. Um, yeah, okay. Just, um, yeah. I'll just generate a new link. I can from no, Dropbox. It, it is fine. Uh, just, I don't know, continue talking. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so when the when y'all are finally able to download the presentation, you can see uh, a picture of what our car will look like. Um, it's in the presentation, uh, but basically it's being kind of built in the UK just outside London right now. So again, something that's kind of different with us is we haven't taken like an old Toyota or something or an old Renault and try to like re remodel that into a self-driving car. We actually have a bespoke platform, like a dead separate um, self-driving drone or whatever we want to call it, just being built um, to carry out these parcel deliveries. Um, so I think that's kind of interesting because a lot of people, a lot of startups, you see, they'll just take an existing car and try to re-engineer that. But we kind of realized that it's much easier if you make a car that's built for the purpose. So we've got a very future, futuristic looking car being built right now. It'll be actually ready in a month. So it'll be next year, January, 2019, the car will actually be built. Um, and there's a picture of what it looks like in the final version in the presentation. Um, right now, it's just a chassis with a lot of wires and frames and stuff like that going on. So there's not much to show now. But uh, end of twenty, uh, end of January, our car gets built. Uh, for the next three months, we do a few tests. Uh, there's a bit of a fundraising thing coming up, and from June onwards, hopefully, it will be running on the streets of London which I think is quite impressive and it makes us one of the first. There are there are a couple other companies doing it, but to have an actual life-size car carrying out these parcel delivery runs is um, 
is a first and makes us one of the first people to do it. So uh, exciting times for us as a company. Um, so I'll kind of start talking about some of the networks and the methods and stuff like that we use. Uh, just kind of just waiting to make sure everything with this link is perfect. It's, it is. It's perfect now. Is it? Okay, cool. Um, if I just change the presentation. Yep. Uh, uh, can... Okay. Sweet. Uh, just go there. Uh, are you able to still answer questions though? Uh, uh, you have a question? Uh, you can ask me. Okay. Actually. Yeah. So the the question is from uh, Rosen. Yeah. Uh, how are you dealing with the uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, if you see the kind of schematics of a car, so that very car, it's actually street legal. It's it's so basically our founder. Uh, okay. So um, as the as as a tech person, there's, there's a division of roles. So I do I, I mainly deal with um, the actual coding and the tech and stuff like that. And the founder obviously um, deals with government and regulation and uh, meeting people. And he's actually managed to get a street legal regulation. So the car that's being built now will be legal on UK roads. Um, I think regulation wise, there really isn't much as long as we kind of convince them that we have a competent team and obviously we won't be doing something. I'll, I'll go on a quick diversion here, which will kind of give you, it's an interesting snippet. You, you all might have heard about the Uber crash, which took place, I think, last year. I think someone died as a result of that. So if you actually look at the frames of that crash, there's no reason why that crash should have happened. Basically, what it is, is the car is kind of driving forward and the bicycle, like a cyclist, kind of rushes straight in front. But if you have LiDAR data, if you've got your, like, range, like 3D sensors, and even if you just treat it just purely as vision, because we kind of ran that footage to our own cameras, and we saw that even before the car kind of comes near the cyclist, you can detect the cyclist, that you can detect someone coming into the frame. So we, it's kind of convincing the government that, you know, you have a safety first attitude and, you know, you have competent people. And, up, and beyond that, we've got regulation. So yeah, we're good to go. Um, but having said that, like when I kind of design, when we kind of designed the framework, like because it's still early days for self-driving cars, like safety is just the main thing, you know, like let's say our car is doing a parcel delivery from point A to point B, something goes wrong. Our priority is kind of to have the car stop and park on the road and we deal with the problem rather than, you know, do some clever thing and try to keep on the road and it just, you know, drives over 10 people. You know, we don't want that. So yeah, everything is de designed from a safety first point of view. Um, yeah, uh, any, and yeah, if, if you all have questions, please keep asking Yeah, and I'll just try to um, answer on the go. Um, so I, I hope that gives you a good idea about the company. Uh, I won't drag more, um, drag more into this, but I'll just literally give you a quick background into. Try to open the uh, um, link. Wait. Oh, I can contact yeah, yeah, from here. It's yeah. Um, like this. Sweet. Uh, just open the yeah, 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 yeah. Makes sense. Um, put your fingers go. Uh, two, like, you know, so, so, so. <laughs> all right, okay. Um, here we go. All right, sweet. So, thanks, Rich. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for that. Yeah. Really <laughs> slight flavor. Uh, so yeah, just a little slight background into kind of uh, me and uh, so the kind of research team behind our company. So it's basically primarily me and my PhD supervisor and my old uni in Wales. Um, so we kind of entered this field about like five years, six years ago, and a bit of history here. Even five, six years ago, deep learning was still this kind of, it was this emerging subject. And my neither me and my supervisor are fundamentally uh, people who approach deep learning. Our, our research is different. It's to do with like evolutionary robotics. Y'all might have heard of it, might not have heard of it. It's very, it's, it's still AI, but it's a different, it's a different field. It's, it's more to do with trying to mirror evolution and get small neural networks running, whereas deep learning is trying to have a very big neural network, but the learning process is kind of artificial. It's not biological. So I, if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. But yeah, so basically we're, you, we're using other methods five years ago, 
and deep learning was in, was kind of coming up and um, just we started shifting towards it and we saw that the results were kind of getting better and better. We used to use different tools, like I used to use something called Tiano, but now I think if you're working in deep learning, have I think for your course you use PyTorch, but either PyTorch or TensorFlow, just stick to that. And you can do everything in Python now. I used to do C++ a lot when I started, but now 90% is Python. Our uh, The software stack for uh, autonomous driving car, whoever, is again 80% Python. The 20% C++ is like engineering things. All the perception bit is mainly Python. So, yeah. A quick question from yeah. uh, uh, Incredible Joy. Um, good resource on evolutionary robotics. Um, good. <laughs> Uh, evolutionary robotics is a field which is it isn't very developed right now. So there isn't technically a library like TensorFlow or something which can get the job done for you. A lot of it is like s libraries which we write ourselves, like bits of code. Um, I'll give you two or three names uh, if you. Um, if you if the so so the main people in evolutionary robotics I'd say are uh, Dave Dave Cliff, uh, Elio Tucci, who who kind of is the principal scientist of Cargo, so he's my supervisor. But um, so and if if you type in if when when you look for if you type in Google things like um, Active Vision plus evolutionary robotics, um, evol yeah if if you kind of do a search on that, you'll get papers. But um, again, th the reason I didn't want to go into this because it's not a very mature field. My prediction is it'll actually become very useful later on because people start realizing that if, if you think about CNNs, I'm not, I, I literally talk about CNNs and tell you how great they are. But if you think about them, CNNs, they take in an image and they'll give you an output, right? But if you think about how humans and even the simplest of biological beings perceive things and learn things, it's not like in and out. It's things like you kind of are interacting with the environment. You're always altering your view. Even when you're looking at me now, it's not like one frame in and you detect that there's a person there, he's moving his hand. What your brain is doing is it's always shifting its view. It's always altering its view, you know? So. That's kind of the theory behind it. Um, I can tell you a quick story, actually, which makes you understand active vision and evolution robotics quite well. It's a diversion because that's not the point of the presentation, but I still do it because, you know, not many, you won't really have a chance to hear this because it's not a very well-known field. So it's an experiment they did uh, way back. It's like totally cruel on animals, but they still did it. Basically, they had two cats, one cat, right? They let it move freely around the room, like a kitten. They let it freely move freely around the room, and no surprises. It had a perfect vision system. It could identify things. It could move well. Okay, the other cat, they actually just suspended it in a basket and they just took it around the room for like in its infancy stages when it was becoming from kitten to cat. And what they found was, it actually had no visual features. And the reason for that is vision and action aren't separate. They're like one integrated thing. So that's kind of, I won't really go more into this. But yeah, I hope that kind of makes sense. Uh, awesome. Thank you for doing this thing. Um, wait, one second. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you have this and one second. The presentation like, and the other one. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, just wanted to uh, make sure you have the um, chat here so in case you oh, see yeah. an interesting question All right. yeah so the chat is here and now the presentation should be uh on this side yeah uh, activision is very much cnn uh, rnn's yeah All right okay so have it like this All right All right so have the sweet that makes sense cool all right um uh, you can see yourself. Oh, yeah, here, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, to, uh, so yeah, to comment there, Activision is very, oh, I can see myself there, yeah. beautiful. Um, Activision is very much RNNs, and the reason Activision is combined, because you asked this, I'll just answer the question. The, the, the 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the 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 core of the project is computer vision primarily. Yeah, um, that's self-driving cars. It's all vision. We have lidar. I'll come on that. So yeah, and, and the reason we pair evolution with um, uh, active vision and RNNs, you can train RNNs through classical backpropagation, but with active vision, you have you kind of create an environment and your agent is free to explore through the environment and learn. So that's why genetic algorithms and evolution become the learning process rather than backpropagation because it might not make sense, but if you think about it now, um, you can't use backpropagation with like this agent completely unsupervised exploring an environment. It's, yeah, 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 it's, it's re reinforcement, exactly. Yeah, nice one. Um, so I'll, I'll yeah, but th th this whole thing's been a diversion. Let's come back to, um, uh, um yeah yeah you can yeah um uh, it's 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 different names for different things and again like it's not a very formally defined field because every every research group has their own theories so me and my supervisor we've got our own active vision evolutionary simulator we use that um okay so coming back to ai and self-driving cars um mention the slide as well so yeah so yeah so i'm on slide uh, so like, oh yeah, so I'm so I'm slide five now, guys. Yeah, uh, ideally this should have been your screen. Again, sorry about that. Yeah, seven. Sorry. Yeah, I'm on slide seven now. That makes sense. And I'll start just going down from here sequentially. Um, so, if you kind of look a bit into history of self-driving cars and neural networks, you'd be surprised. It's um, any uh, just no Python. Uh, I, I, I just yeah. If you, if you hear me out, you you kind of get an idea of what skills you need. Um, um, so yeah, um, people have been trying neural networks for self-driving cars since the eighties. It's a, you'd be surprised, but yeah, and they were fairly successful at the time. There's a project called Albin CMU. If you type in Google, it's a very famous paper. Uh, it was in the late eighties, early nineties, and um, what they found was these are in deep networks, neural networks. Like, I guess all of you guys already know, know about this, but um, uh, neural networks aren't a new thing. The reason neural networks are, and deep neural networks are famous now is because we have GPUs and we have loads of storage, okay? Um, so back in the 80s and 90s, uh, in Carnegie Mellon, I think that's the uni, it's the uni Carnegie state. Mellon. Carnegie Mellon, yeah. Um, so they had this project called the Albin Project, and they used the CNN to directly drive a car in actual roads. Very impressive, but the problem with that was when they trained for a road, a particular type of road surface, it would only do well in that road and only in the times it was trained on. Like if there was shadow suddenly, it would fail. And if you took it to a different environment, it would fail again. Okay, so it was it, it could only gen specialize to the road it was trained in, which is not very good. We want neural networks to kind of, if you train it in one some environments, we wanted to generalize to other environments. Um, uh, uh, any reason for the, yeah, because Python now, unless you want super fast speeds, Python is as fast as C++ right now. It's much easier than C++. It just takes a lot of the hassle away and you can do much more with your time. It's more efficient. And plus you've got TensorFlow, you know, and everything is so standardized. You you can just pull off, if, if you're good enough TensorFlow right now, the, because I have a bit of experience, I can just, get a project from GitHub, just see what's going on, and edit it and run it from my problem. So uh, by the way, I'm a C++ person. I started all this in C++. My work on evolution robotics is in C++, but for deep learning, use TensorFlow because you can and it's easy. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, so yeah, so after CNN and Alvin and all that, basically what, yeah, I'll come to that. Um, basically, so what happened, there was kind of a shift back to traditional computer vision, and um, then we had the advent of self, you know, GPUs and self-driving cars, uh, and we came back to neural net net networks. Yeah, PyTorch is really good too. Yeah, TensorFlow or PyTorch. Um, so I said this before, when I started this, I used to do use something called Tiano, but so things move fast, and basically, uh, Cafe is quite decent too, actually. Cafe, TensorFlow, PyTorch. Don't try not to use too high level. Like I know this Keras. Keras is decent, but uh, personally, I like just having a bit more low level control. Uh, but yeah.
Um, so yeah, uh, coming to kind of, I'll, I'll come to the uh, what server is right now. So basically, our self-driving, each self-driving car, our drone. Uh, can we trick some? Do we have? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll answer that Alvin question. So I'll just answer the server first. So basically, each self-driving car has. So we. So another little inside thing. We are partnered with Nvidia, which is why what I will say will make kind of a lot of sense. So each self-driving car has two Nvidia Drive PX. So a Drive PX is Nvidia's own. Um, is Nvidia's GPU computer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, specialized just for specialized for you know uh, self-driving um, little catch so when we when we first because we are partners with NVIDIA NVIDIA told asked us like because NVIDIA have their own self-driving uh, software themselves it's called NVIDIA drive or something you know so the drive PX comes loaded with NVIDIA's own neural networks and their own demos and all that a lot of that is C++ based, by the way, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and they said, you can just use our own perception software. But when we kind of compared their perception software with our own inbuilt perception networks and stuff like that, we found ours was better or even equal in some cases. So why pay NVIDIA like 100,000 a month to just use that software? So we just use the hardware. So each, each car has two drive PX. And uh, Jetson T, Jetson TK. The Jetson is just for managing the delivery. Like we've got a rack which kind of spits out a parcel, so it kind of manages small things like that. The neural networks run on two drive PXs, and we got six six cameras. Um, AMD. Well, no, because well, because Nvidia gives stuff to us half price. So um, there was. Can we tweak? Some? No, no, no. Uh, Alvin was kind of quite basic. Um, it wasn't a deep network, so a, a modern day deep network. I'm on slide um, nine, guys. By the way, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm kind of. I'm kind of talking between slides eight and nine now. So yeah, just keep an eye on that. Um, so a, a, a deep learning car. So a, any deep learning network right now has let's say millions of thousands of weights. Alvin was very small. Alvin had like, you'd say much, it was much smaller. It was something from the nineties, you know? So there's no point going back to that. You, there's things have advanced so, so much really. So it's, it's a nice thing just to know your history really, but that's it. Um, so, okay. If you have the slides, you can kind of see some fancy images. You can, there's, so, um, we use this, so the way I, so first of all, it, it should be, it's intuitive, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for that. Be, is that Dave? Yeah, okay, I kind of know one of the streamers. No, basically I had problems with Ubuntu. I couldn't get the slide share on, it's, it was a mess. So yeah, okay, thanks for that. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'll come to that. So yeah, so it should be quite obvious, but for self-driving cars, the main thing, no, no, it's runtime. Everything is runtime. Um, so the main thing is perception, right? If you can perceive the road, if you know where the lanes are, where people are, where the road is, just steering the car is trivial. Um, so I, the, the slides are in a Dropbox download, Dave. So if you click the link, you can download the slides. I'm sorry, I'll let you down. Um, okay, so I hope that makes sense. For perception, we've have we have three deep neural networks, one for general purpose object detection. So that's the, if you have the slides, um, I'm sorry, uh, so yeah, um, if you have the slides, the images on the left panel are the outputs of the object detection network and it's YOLO. You're, I'm sure you'll have heard of, or you might have heard of YOLO. It's basically uh, the state of the art in object detection right now. And this doesn't run on TensorFlow, it runs on Darknet, which is kind of their own framework. Um, and yeah, it's runtime. All our networks are uh, 20, uh, are more than 20 frames per second right now. And if you optimize it a bit more, if you, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what the network's called. Um, uh, if you, if, and if I, if, I, if I use PyCuda, I can even make them run faster. It's just we haven't had I haven't had time to do it, but yeah, all our networks are real time. And uh, if you have 
I have my own personal laptop. It's just a Dell. Uh, it's a gaming software. It's a gaming laptop, but I have Ubuntu on this. It's got a, it's got a decent graphics card, and I can run everything, the whole soft driverless car software on it real time. Um, so quick one, guys. I, to I, I told you all about tools and frameworks, yeah? But if you want to use YOLO, I would recommend using Darknet. Um, if you just type in Darknet YOLO in Google, it gives you the project. It's a, it's not, it's nothing like TensorFlow, but it's it's just something else. If you, but I, I would say it's nice to get used to it because there is a TensorFlow implementation of YOLO, but I wouldn't suggest using that. Uh, no, no, just the normal Python distribution. Yeah, yeah, uh, Python three point five. You'd be surprised how how good Python is. You know. Um, Unless you're doing, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Darknet is um, no, um, yeah. Good, good question. That um, so I actually have two YOLOs um, which I haven't mentioned in this. So there is a light YOLO for small, small tasks. So I, I use it to detect traffic lights. So the original YOLO can also detect traffic lights, but I just want an additional layer of safety. So I use YOLO light for some things, but um, primarily. The mainstay of it is you no, know, the full version, YOLO version three, um, and yeah, Darknet is the framework in which it runs. So, I guess that's the best way of putting it. The guy who came up with YOLO is kind of, uh, you know, he's a, he's a funny guy, but he's also very smart, and you know, he names things funny, and I guess that's what it is. Um, the second network, and that's the view you get in the middle, is something called uh, it's a full. It's a semantic segmentation network, so it's just a pixel rise. It takes in an input image, and it'll it'll output every pixel in a set, in a distinct color to give you the class. The architecture for that is called ICNet. Um, uh, Y'all might have heard about it again, but it's a. And the third one is LaneNet, so it's just a network which outputs pixels where the lanes are. And with these three networks, um, we can basically drive on London roads, you know, autonomously. There's obviously other things. There's the support scripts, but if if that if it kind of makes sense, oh, geez, if it kind of makes sense. Those three networks are the mainstay of our software stack. Um, and by the way, all the results you see to our data set. Um, I'm kind of in the process of building the fine tuning loops and everything right now. So once we've got that, uh, our results will be even better. And our strategy, um, so I'm, I've moved on a slide to slide 10 now, but I mean, y'all, now it's all just same, similar slides anyway. So just another quick one, it's some, a specific to our company. So for our, what we do is because everything for us is based on delivering parcels. So in the UK, we've got a postcode system. So, you know, I guess in every country for one postcode is one area. So our networks are, so what we do is we, we capture data from the roads we want to be making delivery runs in, and we capture a lot of data. And it doesn't take a long time to you know cover even a whole city. You know you just drive around in the car for a few hours, and we kind of retrain and fine tune these networks to that data set before deploying them. We don't deploy the networks without fine tuning and retraining it on the road, not because it won't work, because just because of safety. You know you need to be extra sure because if you know it's like kind of a goalkeeper in football, you know? He can make saves for 90 minutes and everyone, you know, claps him, but he gets one goal through and, you know, he's he's a villain all of a sudden. So that's a stupid analogy, but okay. So besides these three, besides these three nets, um, we also use LiDAR, an actual LiDAR sensor, but I also use a depth network, which is basically, I said in the beginning, it takes in a camera image and will output a depth map. Um, and the reason is the more the more kinds of perception you have of a scene, the safer you are, you know? If I can perceive the scene in 10 different ways, it's good because if one, if let's say, you know, YOLO misses something or the IC net misses something, at least my depth net can maybe tell me that, you know, this thing is there. And plus, you know, we've got, very strong processors, you know, we've got two drive PXs, so why not? So, uh, and this is something I've actually implemented recently, and this is what the demo is about, kind of, so it makes sense. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, blocks of flats and stuff like that, no problem. Again, because blocks of flats and stuff like that are, oh, you mean delivery? Oh, no, if, if it's blocks of flats, it comes kind of to where it can. It obviously can't climb upstairs. But to, to train, to train, yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, so okay, so the depth net, that the, 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 the picture in slide 12 is the Google one uh, with, with two depth. But what we found is the results we got from that. Yeah, if you type in Google Google uh, depth net vid to depth, you you can pull off the folder for this depth net. But um, yeah, yeah, I'll answer those questions too. Um, but basically, what we found was it doesn't do as well in our own data set because it's kind of the th the whole thing is it's been trained on specific types of images, so it needs retraining before it does well in our data. Um, so I've used a different network, and the network is kind of in the uh, Dropbox file, um, and I'll, I'll come to that. I'll come, and if you all run the demo, you can actually implement that deep depth net quite well. Yeah. So, so the data is that. That's the whole thing about neural networks. If there's one thing I, you guys want to take away from this, is, uh, yeah, sorry, bro. Uh, it's 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 in the so the slide deck is in the link in the description and the comments. If you just go down, you see that. Just click on that. You can download the Dropbox presentation. And there's also some demos, which has a which also has code to run like a depth net. So you can run it if you get that code. Yeah. So. And there's one thing I can, I want you all to take away from this is this line. It's not really about the network so much, especially I'll answer the darknet question at this frame of this point of time. It's all about data. It's like I spend most of my time just handling arrays and just, just, just handling data, you know, because with neural networks, neural networks have been there since 60s. Why are they popular now? Why are they doing so well now? because we have a lot of data and we have places to store it and we have processes to run it, you know? So the more data a network sees, the better it gets. Actually, I'll rephrase that. The more and the more varied data, the, you have quantity and quality. So if, if you just give um, a network thousand frames of the same image and you say, why is my network doing, not doing well? You know, because it's seen very similar things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, and again, uh, it's 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 a field of work where, um, um, yeah, yeah, generalize exactly, yeah. Um, so again, you know, things like choosing data for training a network, that's something that's kind of, I'd say, there are obviously rules to it, you know? There are some guidelines, so you can't, it needs to be obviously so long and stuff like that, but the kind of, if I try to phrase this right, it's a bit more intuition. The more you all work on it, the more you all get a hang of it. And you all know like what kind of pictures to feed, how to add variability to your data. But you know, that's again, a separate thing. Um, I'm sure there was another question. So your car, you drive the car and the network learns by pure that data only. So just, just a quick one on that. The networks, the network we use, they've already learned. They've been trained on massive millions of like general image data sets, ImageNet, Coco, all these data sets. When we drive the car, we just fine tune the network. It's just another uh, another layer of training. How do you integrate Darknet with parts of your project? Um, Darknet has a Python driver file. So when you download Python uh, Darknet, it'll have a file. I think I've changed the file a lot, but it comes with a file in which you can interface with the Darknet output. So I get, when I, when I run YOLO, I get the outputs to be saved in a file, or I open a socket and it communicates with another Python uh, program and it sends the detections to that, and that program or that C++ program can handle with that. Um, the, the, the trick is literally just getting the, yeah, it's a bit hard, but the trick is to get the predictions out from Darknet, and then you can use it in Python. But there is a file to interface with um, YOLO, so. Uh, well, uh, so the no, 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 Ross. Um, uh, I, 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 like I doubt. I'll, I'll answer that question. Uh, there was a question on features. 
where can we get good data? Well, <laughs> uh, well, hypothetically, if you want to train a self-driving car, you can take your phone out and just go to the streets and film it, you know? Data is now, no, darknet on mobile apps. Ooh, I can't answer that. I'm sorry. I'm not, I, I, I don't, I think it will be very difficult to use darknet on mobile apps. I'm not saying it can't be done, but I think I think the way to go about that is there's different versions of darknet. So there's a there's a ten there's a TensorFlow version of darknet. I'm, I'm maybe that's the way you do it. I'm sorry, I'm not not very really, I can't answer that. Um, I, I I wouldn't try using it. I think I think it just opens a whole can of worms. You know, I'm sure there's an easier way of doing what you want to do. Um, no, we don't use ROS. Um, um, yeah, I, th I, I think. Uh, is there any data set available for self-driving cars? Yeah, so the easiest ones I'd say are, um, uh, sorry, uh, K-I-T-T-Y, Kitty, Cityscapes. Well, um, SSD just for storage, isn't it? Um, I mean, I, is that what you mean by SSD? Or if if it's if you mean something else by SSD, just post it in the comment and I'll address it. Uh, storage, I guess. So it yeah, uh, no no ROS not at all no no, um, I don't really see the point of ROS because if you have if you actually work in a company or something, um, you'll have your own framework. Why use a framework someone else's? I'm not criticizing ROS. It's just I don't I don't see the need for it. Reinforcement learning. Um, well, I kind of talked about that earlier when I was talking about evolution robotics and genetic algorithms and all that. Um, we there's a lot of interest in it. We do a lot of research on it, but for networks that actually oh I know what you're saying yeah yeah uh, single child yeah I know what you're saying yeah um so I'll just finish this one um so for for networks that actually work and can because we want to drive this in London next year so what actually works is just CNNs with traditional gradient backpropagation training. You know the CNNs aren't perfect, but they they work, and so we just use um, gradient backpropagation. No, uh, I'm aware of SSD, but um, uh, we don't use it. I, I I use YOLO. I use ICNet. I use DepNet. Not not the Google DepNet. It's the one I've posted in the link. It's um, it's NY, it's CRN or something. Um, to read this full, but it's a different DepNet, but it actually did better for us. I use LayNet, so a, a network which gives me lane detections. Um, imitation learning, would that be something like uh, GANs, like uh, adversarial networks or something? Um, if, if that's what it is, it's not a bad shout. The, 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 the thing for us is with fine tuning, there isn't a short shortage of data because if if you want to fine tune a network to a street, I can drive on that street ten times, ten different times of the day, and it would still be different because of lighting and environment and all that. So we just we we don't really use GANs if if that's what you mean. If imitation learning is something else, I'm not sure. Um, um so YOLO is not, from well, oh, comma that AI, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, they they do a lot of impressive stuff. Yeah, um, I, I'm aware of that. Uh, so I'll, I'll kind of come to um, like other start startups. Uh, the question was, uh, so my impression was YOLO was state of the art, but if 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 there are differences with SSD, I think there are quite small differences. And so just a quick one. So so because I, I mentioned this before, but it's interesting. So when we, because we partners with NVIDIA, when, when we got our drive PX computers, it came loaded with NVIDIA's own object detector. They don't tell us what it is. I'm not sure what they use, but when we um, t trial that with YOLO, YOLO has done perfect for us so far. So, you know, there's no real reason to use anything else. I'm sure SSD would do as well. Uh, hardware limitations, um, currently we run at 20 frames per second, but it can go up to 50, even 60. It's It really is a lot of um, devoting the resources to like code a lot of stuff in CUDA, and it's something we're doing. Uh, no, Carla, don't really know about that. Sensor fusion, most of our thing is based on vision. 
So we have six cameras around the car, and we have many. We have different types of networks, right? Um, uh, like three or four different networks. So for for the same image, we get different perceptions from it, and then we combine that with three D data from from lidars. No, yeah. So it's primarily camera. We technically don't need to use sensors like lidar and ultrasonic sensors, but we have them because of safety. Um, you know, safety is the main thing. So um, there's and so I was mentioning the Uber crash before. If in the Uber crash, the weather person died, if they just read the sensor, the ultrasonic or lidar data, the car sh should have stopped because if there's a cyclist coming in front of it, you just get a signal rebounding of it. I don't know why that crash happened. I think it was their engineers trying to be too smart and not paying attention to safety, in my opinion. Um, max speed, uh, we can be aiming to run at like, when we start off, we try to start off at 30 kilometers per hour, but we want to go up to 50 or 60. But all that is next year. Right now, our focus is, because our car is being built, it's, it'll be ready in January. So when we integrate it, but, but the target is start off with 30 kilometers per hour which is, I think, quite reasonable, and then scale up to 50. Um, uh, the decision is scripted or, yeah, okay. So so if you, I, I think I kind of know what you're saying. If, if I'm kind of missing questions, oh, okay, there are a few questions I've missed. I'll, I'll try comment address that. Um, I'll just a quick diversion. The demo I've posted in the, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good question. That was, I, I'll tell you, there's a kind of history behind that. Um, the, we're using them in Africa. Uh, so um, so just I'll, I'll kind of finish, I think what I'll do is I'll kind of wrap up the presentation and I'll come and I'll just answer because there's a lot of questions above. So basically I've posted some code in the Dropbox folder. Um, if you run that, you get a picture quite similar to what I've posted in slide 13, but it won't be exactly that. Um, you need to run something called canny edge detector to get the lines, but you'll, you'll get a similar picture. And what that is, is a depth map. And it's something I use in my own system right now. So I think it's a cool thing to have. And there's also a demo script for genetic algorithms. So if you read up what genetic algorithms are, and you can just quickly get started on that script because it's a very bare bones demo on how to use genetic algorithms. If you all have any questions about the scripts or anything, just let me know in the comments. So I'll just go back to a few questions. Um, come other AI, yeah, I'll come to that. Um, so I'll just quickly answer the last question first uh, is, um, so essentially I've actually got a very close friend in Nigeria. And um, before this whole start with my, the founder of this company was finalized, we were actually thinking of doing something similar. And um, the, the, the reason we, why we didn't kind of go down that road is um, of using self-driving cars. And yeah, India or Africa maybe. Uh, anywhere you know is because the money wasn't there at the minute and with India especially I tried doing it in India as well because uh, I had friends there but the government there was this minister who kind of one day came up and said um, we don't need self-driving cars in India and you know the, the money wasn't there it maybe isn't now but guys in five or ten years down the line that's where it's at so if you all have ideas if you if you get scripts working on you know roads in Africa roads in India it's very good because you know eventually it will come there and you know, there's there's a lot of challenges in those roads, but um, it's not really as difficult as you think. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot more people, and pedestrians may cross the road all of a sudden. You know, but those are things which can be handled, and a lot of people, you know, have like run their perception software on roads from you know other countries. You know, and they've actually done quite well. So it's it's definitely something for the future, and it's just a matter of time. Um, what happens learning? Yeah, so yeah, so that's something which is on the focus for next year for storms and snow. Um, and something which we kind of implement, want to implement very soon is night vision cameras. Because with us, the whole thing is you can have your parcel delivered any time of the day so, and night. So if a person is to deliver a parcel at night, it costs them a lot of money. But if our car has night vision cameras, uh, it can deliver them for the same cost as in the day. So yeah, the, the storm and rain and especially night vision, that's our focus for next year. But the thing is, it's not really that different from just using normal images. You just have to, you know, just fine tune your networks or even train them a bit more. And um, it's really just 
it's just doing it, you know. Uh, Theory-wise, there's no reason why you can't, it shouldn't work in night vision, you know. And storm and rain are a bit more complex, but again, the, the, the solution to that is just having training examples where it's storming and raining and has snow. So if you do some, if you, so when it rains next year, we'll go and do a data collection exercise and um, we'll do like a fine tuning run on that and it should adapt to that. Um, slide seven, um, slide seven, slide seven is Alvin. No, no, no. So, um, uh, yeah, um, I'll come to LSTMs. Uh, Alvin, forget about Alvin. Um, it's from the 80s and 90s. It's just a bit for history. Uh, you, there's there's no code to implement it too. So don't just forget about it. Just work on TensorFlow. Um, the demo I posted with the comments here, with the link here, try that. Um, there are some other questions. So uh, comma.ai, uh, really good style. And the, the, the stuff he does is fascinating, but I think I haven't followed up on comma.ai very recently, um, but I think they, so the kind of results they get, we can get too. We, we get similar results. And I think a lot of other, like the, the, the playing field with startups is, oh, I, that actually makes me answer the other question. So the, yeah, so the, the playing field with, at least if you're to a decent level, a lot of self-driving cars are kind of in the same era in perception. Google might be better at us a bit in perception, but you know, with the kind of perception, let's say we have or any other company has, it's enough to maintain a car safely on the road. The question with startups, and that's kind of what is different with us, is it's now a race to implement it. You know, you can you can work on a piece of code for 20 years on, on an offline data set, but the real money now is in implementing it. If you can be one of the first ones to be on the street and making actual runs, whether it's delivery or like passenger transport or whatever, your value is so much more as compared to a startup which is just working on data sets. And you know, because now the maybe that was valuable five years ago, but now you know every it's the the level is there. And guys, it's all open source. You know, all of you, you all know so much about it already. You know, you know YOLO and all that stuff and. That's stuff what we use. Do you use super resolution CNNs? Uh, well, um, the best way to answer your question, I'm not really sure. I, I'm a bit confused what that is, but well, our inputs are, all our input images are standard. It's 1344 by 628. So 1344 width and height 6, 608. So it's high resolution, but it's not really high resolution images. Um, uh, the segmentation network, ICNet, which we use, which kind of colors the whole image into different uh, pixel colors. Um, it kind of cascades the resolution. So it has, if you're aware of ICNet, so it, it, it kind of processes the image in a low, mid, and high resolution, and it cascades the input to give you that final output. Um, I'm sorry if that didn't answer that question. Uh, LSTMs and RNNs, actually, Rollin, who's helping me with the live stream right now, so he's working on a project to use LSTMs um, for self-driving cars, uh, and oh, it's um, that's 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 the size of our. So I get raw raw inputs from our cameras. So if you have a particular type of camera, by default it'll give you like a dimension. And when I remove the sky from them, because I don't really need the top part of it, it gives me that resolution. And I stick to it. There's no actual reason for it. It can be anything. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, LSTMs and RNMs, guys. Again, there's a lot of that's that's again more of the future. There's a lot of scope for that. I'm surprised why they're not used that much. Um, I use them. I use LSTMs for some of my other work with time series prediction, like stock market prediction, all that. I won't go into that, but LSTMs are very useful for that. Um, the, re the the one project we like Roland is helping with me with for LSTMs is. Um, using LSTMs to predict the position of the road. So, and um, I, I feel why LSTMs would be useful is, um, uh, um, oh, oh yeah, um, I, I got the resolution. Yeah, um, I, I feel why LSTMs uh, scenario, and this is just me thinking aloud because we haven't got a results with them, but because LSTMs have this kind of long memory state, if you train them well, they might be useful at intersections, for example, because because of that long memory state, when when it 
approaches frames closer to an intersection, the LSTMs can actually remember and predict that, okay, there's a sharp right coming. So, you know, you have to adjust your net, your uh, pose towards the right more. So yeah, definitely. But, but then it's, it's, there's a difference between um, research and actual stuff that works now. And as much as I'd like a lot of recurrent and even evolutionary robotics to work, because that's my interest in that, right now what works for us is, you know, just your conventional CNNs, you know? So, um, um, yeah, uh, but and, and noise and images um, isn't, is, isn't that much of a problem. And yeah, by the way, when I said I cropped the sky out, it's really just a very slither up top. So even when it goes uphill, we make sure that it can see the sky. Um, and yeah, with, with this resolution, what I've seen is it actually, it kind of works well enough, you know, you don't, because the, again, if you increase the re resolution, there's a layoff on your processing time. So it's a bit of a balance between processing time and uh, resolution. Um, path planning and navigation guides. Uh, this is a bit of a controversial topic because we kind of do something a bit different. Um, so basically for us, but this may not apply to other startups, but for us, right, our delivery roads are fixed. So like a car, because we have specific delivery routes or specific area where our car op operates in, we already have a very good, and by, it's similar to what Baidu use. So it's not like something we made up. It's kind of, no, it's just a general approach of it. So we have, we already have a map of the environment and then we use GPS to give like a rough localization. So we kind of roughly know where we are. And then we use a tiny YOLO to detect some landmarks and some predefined landmarks. And this works because, you know, we know what the road is. We know what the map is. This isn't an unseen environment. This is a known environment. So we don't use any super like complex slam techniques. Um, I, 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 I want to implement particle filters next year just as a layer of safety, but that's primarily where you use localization. Um, get GPS inputs, give us a rough, you know, idea of where we are, and then kind of use this landmark detector to, so like if, if, I, if I detect, if I'm at, let's say a rough GPS position and I detect a bank to my right, based on what I know from the map, I know there's like a left turn coming up do you know what I'm, if kind of that? So that's kind of how we do it. Uh, would you increase, reduce at high speeds to? Um, yeah, I'll, 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 that's, a, that's actually a good question. Um, oh, that, that, that's, that's, that's helpful. Thank you, uh, Rosen. I'll actually check that out. Uh, do you use deep reinforcement uh, learning? No, um, it's, it's, it's a, a, again, because there, there are, I'm not, I'm, if when I say I don't use something, it doesn't mean it's good or bad. It's always a trade-off between resources, time, and people right now, you know, because we're still waiting for another fundraising. Right now, our team is, by limited, I mean, it's mainly me. So it's really what I can implement. And, you know, I have a few interns and stuff like that. Um, but I, there, there are a few very interesting papers on, yes, using deep reinforcement learning for um, dynamic world conditions. It's something I'm kind of, I actually did my PhD on something similar to that. So I would like to implement it at some point, but right now we don't know. Um, it's all pre, the net, networks are trained, they're trained and then they're deployed. Um, yeah, so for satellite navigation, we, we just use GPS, but, oh, co yeah, that, that actually, yeah, that, that sounds familiar. Copy makers, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. Um, uh, would you read a high speeds to, um, I generally don't like kind of playing one with like reduce resolution on the go. Like just just structure wise, you know. If we if I if we fix the dimension, I fix that. It's 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 not something wrong. You could do that, but it's just something I don't. There's no there's no need for it. You know, it's fast enough. You should consider uh, sound. Uh, that's actually a good interesting question. Um, Yes, uh, you, you 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 could use sound, but I think it's it's a bit it's a bit like saying it's that one point zero zero five icing on the cake. You know, you could 
Uh, I actually don't have LinkedIn, guys. I'm sorry. I'm kind of informal that way. I don't have LinkedIn. I don't have Instagram or any of that stuff. Um, I have a Google Scholar. So if you type my name in Google Scholar, you can see some of my papers, which I did like in my PhD. Um, yeah, with the sound, I think the, the 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 one way you can use it, I guess, is if you're in a crowd, if there's traffic around you, you can hear car honks and all that. So I guess there's, there's, there's kind of a way you can use it. But the, the thing is, there is so much more to be done in vision and LiDAR that you'd rather devote that time to doing something like that, which is more useful than, you know, sound would be like a nice spot. You know, you don't really technically need it. Uh, I think was, was there any questions on that? Um, uh, do you do you stream any data from the car? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, data wise, um, we have like a SSD which we can connect to, um, like by the internet. But we have our own storage, like because it's mainly us in the company using it, you know. So we don't really need any cloud solutions or stuff like that. But when we scale up, that is actually something we planned because if we have a central command and control hub. So as the cars are running, they are streaming kind of data and frames back to the hub, and our networks get trained in the hub, and then we kind of broadcast these pre-trained, fine-tuned networks from there to our cars live. But that's something maybe two or three years later, maybe next year, but it's when we're kind of scaled up more. Right now, really, the main focus for us is to get this car delivering in one part of London even in just one specific small part of London, it can take a parcel, give it to two or three people's houses, come back. The Our valuation and what we've done just doubles up, you know, because like I said, there were some previous questions, but really the value lie, now lies in getting these, because we've been hearing self-driving cars for five years, you know. I started doing my PhD five years ago. I, I was hearing, oh, they're coming next year, they're coming next year, but they're still not here, you know. So the value now is getting them on the road. Um, so yeah, I think I've answered most questions. If there's some I haven't, you can put them in here. Final 10 minutes for questions and then we should wrap up. Yeah, guys, yeah. Um, 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 yeah, I think, um, so yeah, I think we've got a little bit left. So if you all have questions, keep just keep going. I'll kind of, I'll just, kind of do a bit of a talk on the fi like final slide. Yeah, we, um, we, we, we also want to implement that charging station idea. Uh, it's something that also helps in localization, actually, if we can have lamp posts. So, but it's a bit of like talking with governments and having that have the, in the UK, we've, the council is quite like strict on things. Like you can't move like a small thing without council permission. So that kind of depends on the founder convincing the council to help us build those things. Uh, interesting thing, um, some other startups, I think, what was the one, Stan, Stan Bolan, who's, who's the uh, Five AI. Five AI. So a lot of, I know, well, I know one other self-driving car startup which um, has access to CCTV images. So I guess, again, you know, because if you have access to CCTV images, your path planning becomes very useful. But again, that, is there are some non-technical factors there? Can the council allow us permission to use them? You know, and this government and stuff like that. So that's other things. Um, I'll kind of, as I'm wrapping up, I'll kind of tell you, give you guys just a thing on where I kind of see the state of the art going because it's all well and good to know what's happening now, but you you all should also have an eye on the future. So when I, um, okay, I'll answer I'll answer that last question now, uh, when I just kind of finish this. So when I was kind of doing, um, when I started my PhD, like let's say five years ago, like right now I'm obviously working with a company, but like I, I got into this field about five five years ago, and just just a funny funny thing, guys, like I my back my bachelor's is in computer science, it's electronic engineering. I did a bit of C, but I didn't really know much of coding. I kind of learned coding while doing the project, while kind of so a lot of things I do is informal, but I do things that work for me, like because I've learned the way I've learned is straight from implementation, no theory. So, you know, so to anyway, that's, that's a separate thing. But what I was saying was even five years ago, for even for things like self-driving cars, people were still reliant on computer vision techniques. Like I had people in university who never believed in neural networks. Uh, it's like, oh, they won't roll, they won't. But then, you know, we kept on hearing about deep learning, you know, 
And I was lucky enough to convince my supervisor to shift our project towards deep learning. And now obviously deep learning is everywhere. So I would, so some of the things you'll want, might want to keep an eye out on the future. I'll give you two things. One, CNNs are brilliant, but I mentioned this previously, the problem with CNNs is they're not biologically realistic. The architecture, the, the way they're stacked is, okay, that's how our brains work. Yes, there are stacked neurons, but the learning process like back propagation is not, is not biological. Humans learn by interacting, humans learn by changing their perspectives, you know, uh, active versus passive vision. Just think about them, active versus passive. So our vision is active vision. How can we get active vision to these powerful CNNs? That's the question that's not been solved. And the second thing that I want to, you, you might want to keep an eye out for is quantum computing, which is, it's something that's like deep learning was five years ago. It's there on the horizon, but maybe in a couple of years, you know, it might actually change our world because the kind of things, it does promise a lot of crazy things and people are starting to get into quantum neural networks and stuff like that now. So I don't know, it's something you all might just want to keep an eye out, eye out for. Um, so what's the most important part of the self-driving car you spend time on is the perception. If you, from your camera and your LiDAR inputs, if you can know where the road is, where the people are, and what is around you, that's it, you know, that's problem solved. Getting the car to steer is, yeah, 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 it's, it's crazy, quantum neural networks. It, it, and getting the car to steer is like engineering, you know, that's like an Arduino project technically. That's not the challenging thing. The main thing is perception, so the main thing I, spend most of my time on TensorFlow, uh, just fine tuning neural nets. Um, actually, a lot of my work is, when you actually work in deep learning, you don't really work on nets that much because that's all predefined now. You know you know what the layers are. Five years ago, I used to code out at each layer in C++. You don't need to do that now. Now it's all about processing data and playing with data because for deep learning, all you really need is X and Y, you know? You need your input, you need your output. So if you can visualize any problem as X and Ys, self-driving cars, finance, anything, it's all the same. So if you just try to work with arrays and and try to like, try, just, you know, everything is so like, just type in Google, you know, TensorFlow MNIST example, if you want to get started and you, know, you can download the GitHub and just, just try to implement too. That's what I would say. The more you implement, the better you get. It's Sometimes you kind of stay in my, and I do that a lot too, you know, sometimes you kind of stay in your head a lot. Like, you know, if, oh yeah, it makes sense. But until you code something, um, until you actually code something in, you know, implement something, see the results, you, it's a different thing. And, you know, you might have problems, but as you solve problems, you get, you know, you get better. Like that's, if that kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, uh, uh, anything else? Uh, my deep learning, I'm mostly self-taught, just YouTube videos and stuff like that. Um, yeah, intuition, that's it, that's it. Like, it's, it's, it's this ex example with like push-ups, you know, if I asked you to do like 100 push-ups a day, you'd say, oh, you know, that's crazy. But if you train for it for a year, you know, uh, you can do 200 by a year, you know, it's all about building up, spending time. You know, there's, there's no quick solutions for anything really. It's, it's all about, Ultimately, a lot of it is kind of doing doing stuff, you know. That's, that's all I would say. Yeah. Hope that answers most questions. If there's any final questions, let, let me know. Uh, probably have to get back to work now. <laughs> um, right. We have the final question. Who posed the final question? Um, yeah. Oh, self-driving cars, uh, where, where can they be used? So I'll tell you why, why we use self-driving cars. So for in uh, our company um, uses self-driving cars to make deliveries. Um, so uh, yeah, instead of a guy in a bike or a car coming and giving you a parcel to your house when you buy something, our self-driving car will come and you can just scan a code and it gives you a parcel. That's how we use it. So. <laughs> How can you reach me, um, <laughs> guys? I'm, 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 I kind of feel a bit ashamed about this, but the thing is, because I'm kind of self-taught, you know, and I've always worked on projects for myself, or you know, like I don't have GitHub, I don't have, <laughs> I don't have um, LinkedIn, I don't even, I don't have Instagram. 
Um, so I'm I'm sorry if I guess the code I've posted in the Dropbox link. That's there are some useful demos you can use. The the, the thing is that even if I shared um, some of the other code, the bigger code that we use for doing these, it it probably won't work in your system because you have to like there's a, there's a lot of libraries. You have to spend time on paths and all that. So it makes sense to just do them yourselves. Um, 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 reach me at uh, Academy if you if you go to Academy of Robotics, our website. There's contact details for there. So if, if, and you know just keep an eye out. Um, the simulation one, the question on simulation. Um, so well, how do you simulate self-driving cars? Um, uh, virtual environment? No, 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 no. Because uh, because we have. Um, uh, we don't. For, there's no need for virtual environment for us. We've got a version of like Linux, um, like like we just run Ubuntu and we just test everything on our own systems. Really, um, there's yeah, there's no reason because again, everything we do is just for our own applications. So there's as long as it works on our own systems, that's that's what we care for. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> just, <laughs> Um, uh, but how, I'd say with simulating self-driving cars, I think like like the one one way you can really simulate it is in in a best case scenario. Uh, Wait. Yeah. Where is it? Yeah, this is a lot. Yeah, we'll be here. Okay, so um, last last answer to this, and then I'll have to go. I have to go back to work. Um, so, yeah, um, in the norm, yeah, exactly. So Nvidia have built this crazy um, self driving. I think a lot of other companies have built um, a self driving car simulator. It, it renders graphics very realistically. It renders, you know. So there is one way to do it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, um, I'll actually uh, post those details here. Um, um, uh, for us, we don't really see it worthwhile to actually spend time and resources to build a hyper-realistic simulator because NVIDIA can do it because you know they are the people who make graphics cards and they've got 20, 20 people just building that. You know, for us, for a smaller company, we don't we don't really need to build a simulator. We kind of do. We have a test course, so when when the car is built, we do it there, and we kind of make our perception very robust. Um, so we like for if, if it kind of makes sense, like when we test our data sets, we kind of improve our perception to a, such a degree that you know we know that when it gets on the actual car, it will be good to to a certain extent. And then we have like a test course. So we put it on the car and it's kind of controlled and we test it there. And then because we are street legal, we we plan to you know bring it to the street, have it drive a bit slow. So we have our own simulator. Unfortunately, just it's mainly a resourcing. I'd love to have a simulator, but you know, we are in NVIDIA, so um, we we can't. Um, we'll have internships coming up because we are waiting for a fundraise. In March next year, once that's done, we can expand a lot. And right now, instead of me, we kind of are planning to have, um, yeah, 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 that. Um, so yeah, kind of planning to expand a lot, get interns, get even graduates. Um, if you kind of just keep an eye out on our website, academyofrobotics.co.org. Um, I'll actually one second. I posted it already. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I have a, um, I have a. Oh sorry, this is how you catalog. Yeah. That I don't check this email very often, but yeah. So if you if you okay. mail me, if you all want to get in touch with me, you can maybe this Ishan at Academy of Robotics or Coder UK. Uh, I don't check this mail a lot, but if it's related to um, this kind of stuff, uh, I'll probably look at it. And if there's obviously, I'll, I'll get back to you all. If you all have any internship qu queries or something, uh, get in touch through there. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thank you, Sean, for <laughs> having. Uh, if you guys like the uh, webinar, um, it will really help me out if you would <laughs> be able to give me like, a shout out. That would be very <laughs> sweet of you. Um, I'll make sure to um, uh, get back to you with more details about the. Uh, oh, that's me. 
yeah, <laughs> about the uh, company, about the projects, and uh, yeah, just uh, reach me at, at Roland on uh, the PyTorch challenge, and I can provide you with more details about everything we've been uh, talking today. Um, yeah, thank you for joining us, and um, yeah, <laughs> have a nice day, guys. Have a nice day. All right, um, let's see how we stop this now. <laughs> okay, so if we go to live control, all right, see ya. Oh, uh, and stream. Nice. <laughs>